Hi everybody, on this screencast of Total OS today, uh, I would like to start out by sending out a big thank you to uh, some of the comments I received and the helpful hints on my previous, uh, previous screencast on the Kubuntu uh, desktop and how to, um, you know, resize widgets and moving the panel bar around. Um, I mean, I did figure it out after I did the uh, screencast, but nonetheless, thank you very, very much for all the comments and for the helpful hints on um, resizing widgets in Kubuntu and moving around the uh, panel bar. Okay, let's get started then. Um, after I did the uh, previous screencast on KDE, and Kubuntu, I downloaded the uh, updated version of Kubuntu, which is 10.40 uh, or 10.4.1, 10 I do believe. I guess that includes all the major um, fixes, fixes, bug updates, kind of like a uh, service pack, I suppose, similar to what, you know, XP, Vista, or Windows 7. Um, I am not doing this uh, screencast in the 10.401. I'm doing this screencast in Kubuntu, the older version of Kubuntu, last year's version of Kubuntu, because the bug of screencasting, which I talked about before, and the issues with that still exists. And that's one of the things that drives me nuts about Linux, and that's why I'm calling this screencast Why Linux drives me nuts and I'm going to talk about a little bit about the future of Linux. Some of this I some of this I've talked about before, but I would like to bring it up again. Okay, let's talk about why Linux why some Linux OSs drive me nuts. Now, here I changed the wallpaper of Kubuntu and it looks great. And of course, you know, Kubuntu with how it looks and the widgets and stuff, I think it's lots of eye candy. It's terrific. Of course, the new one has the plasmoid, uh, plasma desktop, um, adding widgets and stuff. It looks terrific. So as far as the uh, looks of Kubuntu, that's not an issue with me. It looks absolutely terrific. But let's talk about some of the quirks or at least one major quirk of Kubuntu that as a Windows user just drives me nuts. Suppose I had received this operating system as a gift or as a recommendation from someone to me and suppose I never used Linux. Okay, I'm not, I, I look at the desktop and say, hey, you know, this looks pretty cool. Cool panel bar, you know, eye candy here, the way it looks, you know, moving this around, stuff like that. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Suppose I kick the K or click the K button, which is a start button. This looks kind of cool, looks different here, easy to read, easy to use. But let's say I wanted to uh, look at what kind of software or how much, how loaded is this Kubuntu operating system, which I'll pretend I've never heard of before. So let's look at the search bar here at the bottom. Let me click software makes sense as a Windows user I would be clicking software well let's see I don't want to search the web surf where software sauce sources ah software management okay wait for this to pop up here we go add and remove software now as a Windows user hey this looks familiar okay now let's see what software I have in Kubuntu uh, and apparently I have the brand new terrific invisible software. Um, for lack of a better word, this is absolutely goofy, and I'm being kind here. I mean, it's it's more um, you know illogical, irresponsible, stupid. I hate to say that, but add and remove software. You would think there would be a list of software installed on this OS similar to Windows. This drives me nuts. All right, as far as software updates, again, uh, for this part, this is okay. You know, it'll bring up a list here of what I would need to download to bring this up to date. 
and it's taking its time here but that's okay I have the radio streaming off the internet that's why it's taking a little bit of time but of course I have some bug fixes here and so on and so forth but I'll let this go for now um, settings um, if I were a brand new Linux user I would probably have to search the internet to find out what the heck this means and what I'm doing here but the main thing here is add or remove software and obviously there is software installed but it's not coming up so this part drives me nuts the part of um, screencasting in Linux um, in Karmic Koala in this previous version versus the new version it does fine it doesn't crash it renders it rather quickly and it doesn't take forever as it does in Lucid and by the way there have been some comments where you cannot uh, screencast or render your screencast in the OGV file in Linux YouTube doesn't accept it accept it that is not true because and just to prove it to you when I'm finished with this screencast I won't edit it render it or change it at all I'm just gonna upload it as is and you will see that at least in the previous version of Ubuntu or Ubuntu which evidently is less buggy at least when it comes to screencasting you can upload your video without any changing or editing of the video itself um, I tried uh, some of you know about the issues I have with HD video um, I tried it in this version of Ubuntu using the Dragon Player it actually uh, plays the HD video much better not a hundred percent mind you but as far as H video on my single core machine um, playing it in Kubuntu in Dragon Player um, played it much better it was less choppy more fluid not quite there hundred percent but much much better in the previous version of, of Kubuntu versus the, uh, the new one okay let's talk a little bit a little bit about the future um, of Linux and then I'll move on from there quirks or things like the add and remove software um, when you click and the, it doesn't bring up the software stuff like that is not really going to promote or help uh, Linux in its quest to become a major player um, on the desktop market versus Ubuntu. I mentioned this before in my previous videos about market share and uh, you know why it hasn't been able to really reach out to consumers. Uh, briefly, and then I'll end this video because I need to move on and go to work. Linux developers, the Linux community, the Linux uh, OS has to be absolutely obsessive, and I mean obsessive about quality, consistency, and usability. I mean, stuff like this where you click, you know, add or remove software, and it doesn't bring it up. I mean, what else could I say about it, guys? This, you know, as a Windows, no, I know how to find the software in Linux. I've been using this for a while. But if I were a brand new Windows user, you know, all it takes is one bad word of mouth. You know, hey, I tried this great looking Ubuntu and it didn't have software installed or it doesn't show me the software list. I mean, this is just plain goofy. So, number one, the Linux has to be the Linux community the Linux world has to be completely obsessive about consistent being consistent usability and quality number two there are just way too many OS's it should concentrate on one platform on one OS such as Ubuntu you know and there's nothing wrong with the spin-offs you know there's Qubuntu, Xubuntu that's okay Linux Mint is terrific uh, Zorn OS 3. If you haven't taken a look at Zorn OS 3, guys, take a look. I mean, those guys, I guess they're based overseas in 
overseas in Ireland. I mean, really, really, absolutely terrific piece of operating system software. Again, it's Zorin OS 3, and you can take a look at my previous video on that. Um, the search is not coming up, but it is there. Um, yeah, take a look at Zorin OS 3. Um, number three, um, marketing for uh, Linux to thrive. There has to be some kind of marketing uh, campaign to tell people, hey, Linux isn't just for geeks anymore. Um, it's easy to use just like Windows and it doesn't have the bugs and the quirks as uh, Linux used to have. But if Linux, Linux can, can uh, focus on those three things, you know, I just wake up, woke up, I need my cup of coffee, I guess. But I wanted to put this video out before I leave, but because it's fresh on my mind. Anyway, I think I'll end it as it is. This is the Zorin OS 3 website. Take a look at it. But, um, yeah, uh, Linux sometimes drives me nuts. Ubuntu KDE looks terrific. Um, the add and remove software feature in Ubuntu um stinks for lack of a better term i like how it looks and for the future of linux well i'll leave it as it is but you know if there is one thing that the linux community can use as a weapon to promote linux or as a weapon against windows the number one weapon that linux minds can use you want to know what that number one weapon is common sense good old-fashioned common sense and i will leave this video on that note as always thank you for watching total os today thank you for your tips your comments your observations your friendship greatly appreciated as always have a great day talk to you later bye